Atlanta. Coverage of Election 2000 continues. Here again, Judy Woodruff, Bernard Shaw, Jeff Greenfield, and Bill Schneider. At 7 o'clock, the polls have closed in certain states, and CNN is looking at what is going on in Florida. This race between Gore and Bush, too close to call, Jeff. This is the one we'll be watching all night. Gore spent 19, made 19 visits to the state, Bush 13. They poured in millions of dollars. Fourth biggest prize, and it's up for grabs. Mike McCurry says what's going on tonight is a ground war, a massive one. And look at this. Look at the war in Georgia. Vice President Gore, Governor Bush, this race for CNN at this hour, too close to call. And this has got to be a shocker in Austin. They had this race put away in their pocket for weeks, if not months. We'll see. Let's go to Thomas Jefferson State. What's happening in Virginia? Again, the race, too close to call. Bernie, Virginia has not voted for a Democrat for president since Lyndon Johnson in 1964. It is the heart of the Republican base in the South. They should have won this one going away. In New Hampshire, Governor Bush lost the primary there, but right now it's neck and neck between his opponent and himself. Looking at South Carolina with its eight electoral votes, Governor Bush has won another southern state tonight. And in Vermont, Vice President Gore wins Vermont's three electoral votes. Now, for your viewers watching our coverage, this is a, the electoral map. Every time we call states, we will tell you what the totals are. And it's Governor Bush, 28 electoral votes. Vice President Gore, three at this very early hour in our election night coverage. Some stunning numbers, I think. Well, mm -hmm. maybe stunning is too strong a word, but some real surprises here, Bernie. I think that all of us are, are uh, sitting back a little bit at the, at the news that we can't call Georgia. We're not able to call Virginia. Uh, this is a state, as uh, Jeff suggested, has gone Republican uh, how many times? 11 out of the last 12 presidential elections? O only Lyndon Johnson took it. Uh, and, and, and we should emphasize this doesn't mean that we it doesn't think it's mean going that, the other that, way that's it just means right. right now yeah. we don't think we can call it but given how certain all of us were that Virginia and Georgia were going for Bush it's a, it's a little surprising well in keeping with what uh, Hal Bruner was talking about and Mike McCurry saying what's going on at this hour across this country is a massive ground war he talked about Florida he took us up the East Coast he talked about the Republican strength in the Panhandle and Tampa being the swing area Right. Well, the ground war, a lot of it is going on among African Americans, who are, of course, a very prominent constituency in Georgia and in uh, Virginia. Again, those are states expected to be Republican, but uh, a heavy African American vote could really turn it. We have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, some Senate calls to make. First, in Florida, Bill Nelson, the state insurance commissioner, has beaten Congressman Bill McCollum. You will recognize him as one of the House impeachment managers. This is a pickup for the Democrats. Connie Mack, the Republican who could have won easily, most people think, retired. In Georgia, Zell Miller, former governor, appointed to fill the seat when Paul Coverdale died, has defeated former Senator McMattingly and by enough uh, of a margin to avoid the runoff that Georgia law requires. This is a hold. And in Virginia, one of the most closely watched, Chuck Robb, the senator and former governor George Allen, son of the legendary football coach, locked in a race too close to call. Robb was considered the single most vulnerable Democratic incumbent. We are often running for control of the Senate as well. It's still going to be a very long and fascinating night. Bill Snyder, the voters are talking as they leave the polls <laughs> in Florida, in New Hampshire. What are some of the things they're indicating? Well, Florida, we just said, was a toss-up state, and we can't call it yet. You think of Florida, you think of seniors. There are a quarter of the voters in Florida. Supposedly, Al Gore has seniors locked up in his lockbox because of the Social Security <laughs> issue. But take a look here. Uh, look at the way seniors are voting. They're almost splitting 50-50 between Gore and Bush. Bush has a narrow edge. That's not supposed to be happening. That's why Florida is too close to call. And we also said New Hampshire is a state that's too close to call. Gore is fighting hard in New Hampshire. Let's take a look at John McCain's supporters. He endorsed George Bush, and they are going almost 60% for George Bush over Al Gore. Gore thought he had an edge with McCain supporters because he said he endorsed campaign finance reform much more strongly than George Bush did. McCain supporters are a key constituency in New Hampshire. Remember New Hampshire in that primary? McCain beat Bush in that primary. McCain supporters are now going for Bush. Is it just Republican Party loyalty? I don't think so, and here's why. 
only one third of the voters of New Hampshire call themselves Republicans. Half the voters of New Hampshire call themselves McCain supporters. The McCain party is a lot bigger than the Republican party. And what's fascinating, Bernie, is that New, New Hampshire is the one state in New England where the liberal Republicans still live that is generally considered conservative. Uh, and yet, in this most conservative of New England states, where I think the, the Bush campaign really had its hopes to, to get it, we still can't call it for either, but anyway. Let's, let me make a quick point here. You mentioned McCain's strength in New Hampshire. A lot of speculation that if, if Governor Bush loses to Vice President Gore tonight, <laughs> the heir apparent in the Republican Party will be the man from Arizona. That's right. Well, he argued many times that he thought that Bush couldn't win because he needed a bigger message than just the conservative message. And he urged Bush to become the reform candidate. And Bush adopted part of that message. So McCain would be in a position to say, I told you so. But remember something. He's played the good soldier. He endorsed George Bush. He campaigned for Republicans. So Republicans have no complaint about John McCain trying to undermine Bush. And especially when he was dealing with the skin cancer and he had to take time yes. out to be treated and recover from that too. It was also speculated that in New Hampshire, and we don't have any way of knowing if this is the case yet, that, that New Hampshire may be one of the few places where Ralph Nader could be hurting ah, George Bush yes. because of those very yeah. McCain voters right. from, uh, from earlier this year. All right, let's go over to the balance of power uh, desk, arena, I should say, and uh, talk to Wolf Blitzer. Wolf, what are you saying? Judy, in Vermont, uh, we're ready now to declare the incumbent Republican Senator Jim Jeff Jeffords a moderate Republican, well known for his liberal point of view. He has been re-elected against Ed Flanagan, the first openly gay U.S. Senate nominee of a major party. Let's take a look at the new balance of power in the U.S. Senate right now. With the, the win of Bill Nelson, the Democrat in Florida, uh, the uh, balance of power has now tilted one toss-up state going for the Democrats, the Democrats one uh, gain in their need for five Stuart Rothenberg to become the majority power in the Senate. Well, Wolf uh, McCollum, of course, was one of the House impeachment managers. He started out behind. A lot of Republican insiders, uh, both in Washington but also in Florida, wondered whether he really had enough appeal statewide to beat somebody like Bill Nelson. Obviously, he closed, but he didn't get over the top. It would be interesting to look at the uh, exit polls to see if that fact that Bill McCollum was an impeachment manager had any significant impact in his defeat today. Let's take a look at the House of Representatives. We're now ready to declare in Kentucky, Representative Ernie Fletcher, the Republican, the winner over former Representative Scotty Basler. Uh, it looks like a pretty significant uh, victory. There's no change, though, uh, in terms of a pickup in the House of Representatives. Still the same as it was before. The Democrats need seven. Well, if this is a big race, though, uh, I think a year ago, many insiders would have said Ernie Fletcher is headed for defeat. Scotty Basler, a former member of Congress from this congressional district, a statewide candidate who narrowly lost the U.S. Senate bid. Uh, allegedly, the issue of patient's bill of rights was going to hurt Fletcher, who is a doctor. The doctors switched positions. They supported him two years ago, but not this time. Instead, that issue did not hurt him. He was successful. He was able to neutralize it uh, at the end of the campaign. Basler turned to guns as an Issue. And in fact, the NRA supported uh, Scotty Fletcher, as did the Republican Majority Issues Committee, Tom DeLay's group. This is a big win for the Republicans. All right, let's take a look at the uh, uh, governor races right now in New England. Two governor races, the incumbent uh, Gene Shaheen facing a challenge from former Senator Gordon Humphrey. Uh, right now, the vote is much too early to call, and we don't know who is going to be the next uh, the winner of that race between Gene Shaheen and Gordon uh, Humphrey. Uh, as far as Vermont is concerned, uh, uh, Howard Dean, the incumbent Democrat, uh, it looks like he may come in first, but he may not get, according to our exit polls, the 50 percent he needs in order to be reelected. There could be a runoff in that gubernatorial race. Vermont uh, is, a, is a state where Governor Dean signed into law the so-called gay marriage uh, rights uh, provision. Right, civil unions. And really, we've been watching Vermont, which has been trending Democratic for some time and, of course, went to the vice president today. We've been watching that state to see whether this issue, civil unions, is going to redefine the politics of the state, re-energize conservatives. Not yet clear. All right, Stuart Rothenberg will have a lot more. Back to Bernie on the national desk. Thank you, Wolf. And quickly now to Missouri, where on the ballot, a dead man's name is in contention. And correspondent Kate Snow has some news. 
Oh, well, Bernie, we're hearing here in Missouri that the state's Democratic Party asked for the city of St. Louis, they asked a federal judge to keep the polls open late. That because turnout here has been a real factor today. They have had incredible turnout here in the city of St. Louis. We've just learned that a judge has ruled, a federal judge, to keep the polls open until 10 p.m. local time. That's 11 p.m. Eastern time. The judge, according to Democrats here, saying, quote, the Board of Elections didn't live up to its obligations to allow the citizens of St. Louis to vote. That coming from a federal judge here in the city of St. Louis. I can also tell you that I've talked to the County Board of Elections here in St. Louis County. This, of course, being one of the most populated areas of the state of Missouri. St. Louis County telling us they have a two-hour line right now, and they are not going to count any, any results until everyone has had a chance to vote here tonight. One more note, Bernie. In Kansas City, the uh, state Democratic Party also asked for a federal judge to allow polls to remain open late in Kansas City. That request in Kansas City proper was denied. Bernie? Kate Snow, what are Republicans saying about this late development, which is very significant, and how might this bear on turnout, given the dynamics of the race, the widow Jean Kernahan, right. her late husband running against Senator John Ashcroft, the incumbent Republican? What about the dynamics of this right now? Right. Well, Bernie, the, these, these notes just coming in now, so I have not had a chance to talk with the Republican State Party yet, but I can imagine that there will be some concern. That's because these two areas, Kansas City and St. Louis, both urban areas, both Democratic strongholds, and clearly, if the polls are kept open in these urban centers, that could potentially help the Democrats.